This conference will now be recorded. All right, everyone. Well, welcome to the VUG Canada. I believe this is the third official one that we've had. Uh, my name is Chris Childerhose. I'm one of the VUG leaders. Uh, joining me today is Han Dang, who just became one of the VUG Canada leaders, as well as Vin Pham, who is a senior systems engineer at Veeam. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about tape. Uh, just as the slide says there right in front of you, are we still talking about, about tape? Yes, we are. Um, so I will let uh, Hin introduce himself, and then once that is done, uh, we'll let Vin take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hin Kang, and uh, I'm proud to be uh, a co-leader with Chris uh, at the VUG Canada group. And uh, th yeah, this this was an, is an exciting thing for me. I, to me, it was a little bit of a, a step back from cloud, but still in the whole area of mutability and, and air gapped. And yes, so we are still talking about tape and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing what Vin has to present to us today. All right, so go ahead, Vin. Thanks, Vin. And yes, so my name, I'm uh, Vin Pham, Senior Systems Engineer with Veeam. Let's just kind of go through here first. So. Who am I and why am I the guy talking to you about tape, right? Uh, just to rewind, I kind of want to rename the title tape, the other four letter word, just get a little comic relief. But so anyway, so my name, once again, Vin Vom, Senior Systems Engineer with Veeam. Been with Veeam for a little over five years now. Uh, prior to Veeam, I spent 10 years at uh, Spectralogic, a tape library company here in uh, Boulder, Colorado. And it's funny, you know, when I started off, I was a field application engineer pretty much a guy with a suitcase to fly anywhere in the event that one of our massive tape library systems failed. I was a break fix guy. Moved everything to from tier three support and then jumped on the pre-sale side um, as a solutions architect uh, for Spectralogic. But we have an hour session, so you know I'm gonna try to fill this as much as time about tape, but let's start off with just a little bit of history around tape, right? I swear, I promise not to bore you guys. Try, try to keep this energetic, but you know, you know, the tape was actually the original first computer. You guys knew this, you know, uh, the open reel tapes, right? There were eight tracks. Six of the tracks were actually used for data. One was a parody track and one was used for a clock or timing. So think about that. There was 180, 28 characters per inch. That's one bit. So this is really kind of just thinking of the original computer was a actual tape system. And then we progressed to uh, closed tapes. Right? Those are open reels. And then really who came to the market? Uh, Sony. Sony came to the market with AIT. And look at these speeds, right? Groundbreaking speeds, 25 gigs, three megs a second. But seeing how uh, AIT was kind of the progression, but you know we had to advance in technology. So what happened? The introduction, uh, introduction of LTO, the half inch standard tape, right? This is where the tape technology really started progressing from a storage and performance perspective. And the reason why is, you know, back in the day, we had something called the LTO, uh, L uh, Ultrium Consortium. Now, the consortium, I believe the name has changed, but the whole idea is a bunch of tech technolo uh, tape technologists and tape manufacturers came together and said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and, um, progress the advances of tape and we're going to comply to say we're going to release specific generations so the consortium oh yeah great great point Chris. Um, so let's just take a step back i'd like to make this interactive as possible please 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 use the chat throw any questions in there i can kind of stop because you know i'm just talking about tape anyways and we can talk about how veeam utilizes tape v12 items or whatever um quick question greg asked how is it connected uh, most likely, um, it's either going to be fiber channel or SAS. Those are the two connections available today for tape, fiber channel and SAS. Majority is going to be, you know, the larger systems are going to be fiber channel due to the um, the distance limitation of SAS cables. SAS just, cables. Just, just, just so you know, Vin, I was trying to ask Greg how he had his mm. tape connected because he had asked. He's using gotcha. LTO 7, so he's getting around 15 megabits per second. So is it too slow so uh, uh, there we go it's connected yeah to SAS, you know so. SAS, SAS is interesting right because you know it's it's a single bus and typically people will have fan out cables so you're kind of tied to that centralized bus speed of a single bus um because there's four to one from a SAS perspective um but you can have one to one hba it's um SAS um one to one connections for the SAS hbas to increase those um the performance is really going to be a limitation of that hba all right 
Um, continuing on here, so um, yeah, I was talking about the LTO consortium. You know, so what it did was it provided with a roadmap. I remember when I started, you know, um, with SpectraLogic, we were dealing with LTO2 tapes. And then when they released the roadmap, you know, LTO910 came out. Now they missed the mark a little bit, but they actually came to fruition. You know, when, when I first started, they were saying LTO9, LTO10 um, should be roughly 50 terabytes native. You know, they got pretty close, 36. But thinking about that, you know, just showing that this consortium, all the tech, tape technologists and the manufacturers are coming together to ensure that the technology is going to progress. And this is their latest roadmap. So they are they are committing to Gen 14. Could you imagine half a petabyte on a single tape, right? That's going to be pretty, pretty powerful. And, and I'm going to explain to you why um, the technology is progressing in, in, this, in this way. So from a tape perspective, let's talk about the physical characteristics. So the substrate on tape itself, you know, back in the day, there was a big, um, you know, negative connotation around tape and that was due to the tape um, not lasting beyond you know 10 years or something and that was due to the substrate in the past they used a metal particle substrate which means it was prone to oxidation oxidation terrible terrible for tapes you're pretty much going to lose data but what happened was with the the um the beginning of lto6 they changed the substrate to barium ferrite Barium ferrite is pre-oxidized, so it really can't oxidize. You're not going to have those um, bit corruptions. And just really from the um, microscopic level, and you can see the structure is more uniform and smaller, so we can have more clear readings when we're um, reading um, data from tape. So the advancements of the tape medium started, right? The next thing they needed to advance was the actual drives themselves. So we went from GMR to TMR. Now this is this is where interesting. These are the exact same drive heads as disk technology. So it's not like they're creating a new tech, right? This so let's look back in the day with these um, GMR, right? GMR, those are probably you know SAS disks back in the early 2000s. You know, then when when disks start progressing, they switched to uh, to GMR. So once again. Tape isn't really creating a new technology, so they're just following what DISC did, applying those tech to tape to, be able to ensure to hit to, uh, to ensure that we're going to hit Gen 14. So first of all, the substrate is now barium ferrite. The drive heads are now TMR heads, which are pretty much you know the old school drives, so we're just reusing that tech, and then we're going to go and progress, and that's why we're going to get to that um, um, to the generations. Then furthermore, you know, because of the combination of the new substrates and the combination of the new drive heads, really showing the bit error rate of tape, right? We're showing it, it is about a, a, a magnitude of two better than your enterprise class disk drives. So, um, because think about what's think about what's happening here. A disk drive, right, was, how, I forgot how many platters, but you're talking three and a half inch disk here. Tape is half an inch by a thousand meters. So if you're looking at kind of the size perspective, right, a, a, a bit on a disc is probably the size of a, uh, you know, a, 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 the, your pen, your, the tip of your pen, where on tape is probably the size of your table. That's why we were able to read these bits and determine if there's any air rot, um, air bit or flip because of that, because of just the whole, the size of the, the bits themselves, because once again, tape is a half inch by a thousand meters. And, you know, with the tape economics, we can always go to, you know, go to the LTO website. They have these nice little TCO calculators. I'm not really sure the underlying um, equations they use, but really they're just they're just accounting for the cost of the initial investment of the tape library, cost of the tapes themselves, but a really big factor is heating and cooling, right? If you think about tapes, um, they're, they're pretty much offline, so there's not much heating and cooling needed. And then go ahead and, you know, take a look at this calculator. You can plug it in and see what it outputs. But in this scenario, we were talking one petabyte, 15% year growth, 10 year T, uh, TCO. All right, enough about history of tape. Let's talk about, you know, how tape complies with, with Veeam, right? And you guys are probably familiar with this philosophy, the three, two, one rule. You know, I call it now the, um, uh, the area code more or less. Which one is zip code or area code? Either or. So it's now it's three two one uh, three two one zero rule, which means you should have three uh, copies of your data on two separate mediums. One needs to be offsite, one needs to be immutable or air gaps, and you should have zero backup um, verification. 
um, zero errors uh, when you're verifying your backups, right? And you know, we're talking about tape, but obviously we're not using tape as that initial landing zone. You know, we shouldn't be writing all backups directly to tape, maybe for specific use cases, but we should be leveraging other storage mediums out there and just, you know, Beam gives you that ultra resilient media type. Obviously tape is on there, but you know, we're talking um, um, object ready, um, um, object storage ready with object lock, maybe some on-prem um, hardened Linux appliances. But once again, you know, Veeam with a software application, we're storage agnostic, being able to leverage all these uh, storage target mediums, but really today's focus is on, on tape. Uh, spot on, Marty. Yes, looks like the same as Glacier Reliability. Yeah, if you look at Glacier Reliability, they tout those, I think, 17 or 19 nines um, from a, a bit air um, um, perspective. All right, so the this is kind of what we can do um, in the past, right? Typical backup from tape. So this is what we can do prior to V12, and then we'll go, go ahead and dump into the V12 items. But really, really um, standard workflow here. You have your backup, your Veeam backup repository. You have your Veeam backup server. And there is a database associated on that Veeam backup server. So from there, we're going to go ahead and trigger the jobs. We're going to go ahead and update the back the tape catalog and the backup catalog and go ahead and push the backups directly from the backup repository through a tape server to a tape device, right? And then you can go ahead and set it offsite to maybe, you know, um, Iron Mountain or something of that nature. Now this is a VBK format, you know, VBK is Veeam's um, full backup format. It's going to be that format writing directly to tape. That's the standard, standard uh, philosophy. Um, and the next is your file to tape. Now, prior to V12, what we did was, right, we went ahead and same idea, instead of a Veeam backup server, we just added some server, uh, instead of a Veeam backup repository, we added a server in the inventory. And then from there, we're going to write files directly from that file server through the tape server to tape. Now, here was the caveat back then, right? When we did this, we had to index every single tape or every single file, which really increased our database. And if you guys are familiar with Veeam, you know, for our default installation, we leverage SQL Express. Now, we all know the limitation of SQL Express, right? The main limitation is the database is only able to grow to 10 gigs. Now imagine you're doing a file to tape with you know, 5 million files. We're indexing every single one of those and putting it to that database, that database will grow, right? So what did we say? We said, hey, go ahead and leverage SQL standard, which is fine, right? SQL standard is fine. What is it? There is a uh, cost associated with SQL standard. Um, so that's how the workflow was. We're gonna go ahead and index each file through the server, through the tape server, and, and to tape, right? That's kind of the, the way. And then last but not least, NDMP. NDMP, if the storage array supports it, we're going to go ahead and add it into the inventory. And we're going to use the NDM, uh, NDMP protocol, once again, update the database and go from the NDMP dumps through the tape, uh, tape server directly to tape. Right. And then through all of these items, you do have the capability to do parallel processing to help with the efficiencies of tape. You know, in this scenario here, we're seeing a single tape job with four VMs. Each four of these VMs are being written to a tape library, but then we're going to go ahead and do parallel processing to spread these across four jobs to get the um, your performance parameters that you require. Now, that is an option to enable parallel processing. Let's, 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 let's think about what we're doing though. Do you want your backups to have, to be kind of self-contained in a single tape? Or do you want, do you really have to hit these performance parameters to get these backups completed? It's, you know, it's gonna be a juggling act, right? Um, if you had, you know, if you, let's say you did four tapes, that's great. You're just, you are going to have to manage four, uh, four separate tapes to pull these individual VMs. Or, you know, Veeam does have the inventory to tell you where the jobs are from a tape perspective as well. But just be aware, you know, parallel processing, um, great functionality, but really could, you know, add a little bit of defragmentation from a where the VMs reside on the tape perspective. So make sure you just kind of keep those, um, keep that in mind when you're doing those items. Um, just real briefly, you know, from a Veeam perspective, you know, we do have, you know, please speak to your SEs. We do have nice little calculators that we have built in place to help with, you know, 
um, sizing the library itself, sizing the Veeam repository, and whatnot. So just know that we do have these calculators for you guys. Please um, just um, contact your local um, Veeam SC. All right. So every, that was, you know, we talked about the history of tape. We talked about what Veeam did with tape in the past. You know, obviously V12 launched two days ago. So let's go ahead and have a discussion about what Veeam has did with V12 specifically around tape, right? So um, you guys are familiar with NAS backups, right? Being able to protect your really, really large unstructured data set, pushing it to a Veeam repository where you can leverage Veeam's change file tracking mechanism essentially to back up your entire share without ever having to crawl the tree after the first pass, right? We're gonna, we're gonna protect the entire um, parent, um, parent folder. And then essentially what Veeam does is we create a vcache file to go ahead and run a hash to do a compare to determine what version has changed. The beauty there is we're running that hash, we're not crawling the M tree or your entire tree structure. So it really makes backups extremely efficient. You know, um, I have a customer um, in my patch, it's a university, you know, they have roughly a 200 terabyte share, 180 million files, and they were only able to back up that system, you know, once every week or so, because it took about, you know, five days just to crawl the tree in terms of change. With this new uh, Veeam's NAS backup functionality, we now have the capability to leverage change file tracking mechanism and protect that system now every three hours, because we are eliminating the need to crawl the tree. Um, so, now, all those enhancements that you guys are familiar with on the NAS side, being able to do change file tracking mechanism, protecting the permissions and all the ACLs, these will be um, enhanced and ported over to tape as well. So when now you do tape, tape jobs, we're going to go ahead and restore those permissions and those ACLs, and you have the capability to restore just those permissions and ACLs as well. Right? So, you know, um, how does it work? You know, in the past, we couldn't do NAS from tape. You know, you would have a NAS backup and then you would do a secondary job where we're, where we're actually talking to the source again and pushing that to tape. So you're, you're, you're touching prod twice, probably not the best case scenario, especially if you're already backing it up with our NAS functionality. So now what Veeam does is the source can be that NAS repository, right? So now instead of querying that initial file share, we're actually querying the Veeam repository with the NAS backups there, which is kind of essentially a share as well, the way we kind of write things. So um, benefits there, right, is um, you're, we're not touching prod anymore. We're making an additional copy of your backups, pushing it to, once again, um, tape, right, the original OG uh, worm medium, and now you're going to have it as that complying with that 3-2-1 rule. You have that secondary copy. It's off-site. It's also immutable. So that's going to be a nice little functionality now. If you're doing the NAS backups, you can actually just write those backups from the NAS repository directly to tape rather than sending it from um, the source file share again. And once again, so I mentioned this earlier, but very, very similar now. now. As backups, guess what? Our ACLs are going to be preserved. You know, and we can do it at the folder level or we can even do it down to the file level. But just know now that when we do that push, all those items are now um, preserved. Just reiterating the fact that I mentioned, once again, avoiding load on production NAS because we're actually running it from the Veeam repository rather than the source data set but, and, and fulfilling that, um, that 3 two, one um, um, rule. Now I mentioned that, right? So I mentioned we're doing it from the NAS repository to the tape, but with V12, we can definitely do it from the file share directly to tape now as well. Let's say you didn't have a NAS backup, but you really had maybe some geo imagery where data never changes, right? Go ahead and do that file directly to tape because we now support in V12 Postgres. Beauty, beauty about Postgres, there is no limitation from a core usage perspective for the database, no limitation from a database size, and guess what? It's free, right? So now if you can leverage, if you, if you shift your configuration database on the BNR server to Postgres, 
now we can just expand you know and then you're not tied to sql enterprise or sql standard paying for those additional licenses so uh and then here's another unique uh, uh kind of beneficial items from restorations right um before it was kind of you know before it was more at the file level and at the vbk level now since you're doing if you're doing a nas backup um, to tape we can actually restore the entire share now right so it gives you a little more a little more cap a little more um granularity and functionality uh where you can restore the entire share share directly from tape or you can do a single file or a single folder um is is uh is capable yes and for the other <laughs> free is the other good uh four letter word <laughs> other tape news Let's just go ahead and dive into here real quick, right? In the past, we always had to run tape servers on Windows. Guess what? We can run the tape server on Linux. What's great about Linux is there's no drivers. It kind of just works. So um, really, really nice functionality here. If you didn't want to pay for a Windows license or whatnot, we can go ahead and leverage this. Um, we can run it directly on a Linux repository. So the Linux repository can now be your tape server. You have the Linux repository, put your tape server on there. So now we're going from that physical box to directly to tape. So we're going to go ahead and bypass any type of network hops that you have writing, um, you know, from um, from the repository you know, to, to tape, right? In the past, you know, if it was Windows and you had a Linux repository, you have to go from Linux repository to a Windows tape server, then to the tape library. Now we can actually deploy all of those directly on a um, Linux OS. Um, improve LTO support, right? Uh, we had some a little bit of hot fixes for 11A for performance pr perspectives, and when V12 comes out, we will have support for LTO 9 straight from the box. And where my camera is kind of being doing a weird autofocus there. So, um, other times, right? So we talked about leveraging the you know the NAS repository, right? Um, we're doing a job from NAS directly to tape. Now we didn't really mention what type of repository that can be. So if you guys are familiar with V12, what's the big push in V12? We can leverage object storage for any job, which means object storage for any job, uh, object storage for any repository. So we can actually go from object storage now directly to tape. Now, I would highly, highly recommend do you leverage an on-premise object storage? Because if you do leverage an object storage, if you're, if you're repository is an object store that's saying S3 bucket, think about what we're doing, right? We're pull, the latency, we're pulling for these blocks from the S3 bucket over your WAN down to your physical tape library, then I mean, it's your tape, physical tape server, then out to your tape library. It works, it might be slow. So just be able to just, just let's get, let's sit back and take an idea of what we're doing here, right? But now from a Veeam perspective, the repository here can be object storage. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and go to um, directly to tape. So very, very unique items, you know, being with V12 saying, hey, I can write anything direct to object. That repository now can actually be that source um, target that we can go off off the tape. Let's see, you got a couple questions here. Do, 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 do. We got a question, are server backups on tape still per machine? And will this new feature in V12 keep the metadata with them, or is it different uh, on how um, tape processing works? Um, yes, so it is a per machine backup with um, with tape, right? So each VM is going to be its own um, VBK. You know, I think with V12, we 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 defaulted to a per VM a per VM backup no matter what. I've always been a big fan of per VM backup. It just makes your backups much more transportable, right? Um, and having that full control, sure you do lose a little bit of deduplication. But let's be honest, the majority of our safe save um, space savings is around compression. Um, dedupe is only really at at the job level. So so yes, the metadata will be kept with it. So this will be part of the new V Mover uh, uh, functionality. If you guys are familiar with the V12 uh, V Mover uh, aspect, being able to uh, uh, have a specific uh, metadata file for each machine. So we can kind of do, you know, maybe a little bit of load balancing of your repositories, or even maybe even load balancing um, 
um, of your tapes. You know, this just gave me a, uh, one thing I just realized, you know, from a tape perspective, I didn't highlight this, but Veeam does have a tape copy function now, which means if you had, let's say, you're reintroducing, I don't know why I didn't put this in there, but let's say you're uh, you're introducing LTO 8 or something, right? But you're running with old LTO, let's say six drives, uh, six tapes. We can actually do a tape copy function now. We're gonna copy the data on the LTO 6, run directly to LTO 8 because Veeam controls that catalog. So that's gonna be a nice kind of migration tool that you guys can have if you're moving from specific generations to, uh, to, um, to newer generations. All right, seems like we're not getting many questions. So there we go. Yeah, so feel free guys, um, answer questions here. I'm gonna jump into the lab now, the lab portion of this. Dive into what it looks like from a Veeam perspective um, and show you these these capabilities, these functionalities. But once again, really guys, uh, um, guys and gals, feel free to use this as an open forum time to go ahead and discuss anything around Veeam, around tape, around V12 or, or whatnot. So let's go ahead. Oop, let's see, we have a question. Then we'll, let me go ahead and just exit out of here. We have a do, do, do. Jason asks, I've always hated about LTO generations, having to keep older ones around so I could reorder tapes. Yes, right? That, yeah, it's working at, uh, at Spectre Logic, that was always the use, that's always a discussion. Hey, hey, just keep one drive around. What generation? Oh, you had LTO4. Let's keep an LTO6 around just for reads, right? So now let's go ahead and do that tape copy. Let's do the tape copy because we can just move everything because we're just controlling that catalog, pushing it to a newer um, LTO8, LTO9. So then now the, the catalog is completely updated so we know where those backups are. So great, you know, that was kind of the biggest hurdle growing up or growing up, you know, working at Spectrologic was what do we do with those tapes? We always had to, you know, it always had to be controlled by the actual application themselves. And most applications really didn't really have that um, migration function where Veeam does give you that nice um, tape copy functionality. Uh, tape copy, no, actually tape copy was a V11 um, enhancements. And all right, could we use older drive slash media for daily incrementals? Do, 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 do. Older drive for daily incrementals since less data and newer. And LTO for fulls. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, great question, Marty. You know, from a Veeam perspective, what do we do there? We create media pools. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look here from media pools. We have our GFS media pool. If you guys are familiar with GFS, that's your grandfather, father, son approach, your weeklies, monthlies, um, and yearly backups. It kind of just, you know, uh, takes over for each parent um, uh, job. So let's go ahead and do the properties here. Here is your standard media pool, right? Here are your tapes that you're gonna associate with this. We're gonna add these tapes. And then here are your media sets. This one is for, uh, let's see. This one is for your um, regular fulls. Then what we could do is, do, 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 do. there we go. Uh, this can be, wait, where is my, We can go ahead and create a incrementals pool, right? Uh, add a standard media pool. We can maybe assign this as your incrementals or something. Right. Now you can go ahead and choose that lower generation tape. Uh, technology, add it here, right? Nope, I don't have any tapes available. But you can go ahead and add that, create a media set and whatnot. So you can define specific tapes and whatnot. Um, um, for each each media pool. Okay, let's see. We have a question from Greg. Can you restore VMs directly from tape, or do you have a copy to a repository then uh, import it? Yes, you can restore. Let's actually show you that. Let's exit this. Do, 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 exit. So let's go ahead and show you that. Right, boom. You know, from Veeam, right? Here's your snapshots, your disks and tapes. Here's my VMs. Go ahead and right click. Restore the entire VM. Notice here, you have the option BAM. Uh, let's go ahead and create a, so here it is. So 
Now, when you restore, let's go back real quick. This is my VM living on that tape. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Well, you can go ahead and choose a specific point as well. If you had other, other different recovery points, right? But in this scenario, we're going to choose just the latest. Hit next. And here is the restore source. If it is a single VM, we yes, you could uh, restore directly from tape. We recommend that if you do multiple VMs on the same backup file to restore it to a staging repository, then restore from there, right? Because when you do a restore from tape, it is a single threaded process that we're going to write back to the host, where if you want to do multiple VMs, it's probably going to be better to put that on a random access disk pool, right, to go ahead and read those so we can get more of that random IOPS rather than a single threaded stream. So the answer to your question is yes, we can, but let's make sure that that is going to be the most efficient workflow. If you had multiple VMs on that tape, let's go ahead and stage it first and then um, restore. But yes, you do have the capability to restore directly from tape. And here, right, this is you're going to choose a repository that Veeam is going to uh, write that file to, and then you're going to use that, that repository to do um, resource. Well, let's just go and continue here. Next, I'm going to go ahead and restore it to a new location. All right, this is, uh, there's my host I'm writing it to. Those are my resource pools. There's my data stores. There goes my VM folder. You can even go ahead and choose the network schema that you're going to um, remap to. And then the reason, you know, this is a demo. The next summary, right? Very, very, you know, if you look, this, these steps are very similar as if to, like if it was an instant VM recovery, but it is pulling directly from tape. And hit finish, and we'll go ahead and start this process. I'm not going to do this from a demo perspective for the time for time sakes, but as you can see, we can do it directly from uh, from tape there. So from a Veeam, here we go, Veeam perspective. Um, from a tape infrastructure, we go ahead, and create your media pools. You have your standard media pools here for your fools and your incrementals. Then you have your GFS media pools here, right? GFS, these are fools only. These are your weekly, monthly, um, and yearly fools. Here's where I add my tape server. Here's my NDMP server. I do have an HP library here with four drives. One is being leveraged, three are idle, and there's all my tapes. Then we actually have a vaulting capability as well. Um, but let's go back to the tape jobs. So let's just do this uh, file to tape here. The nice thing about this is all of those enhancements that I mentioned pretty much is just an option now in the pull down, right? Um, in V11, you didn't have these options to pull directly from a Veeam repository. Now you do. So the learning curve is going to be very minimal because the options are, hey, the options are available now. <laughs> so um, before you couldn't see it, now you do. So now you're able to backup directly from any repository, directly to tape. Once again, we can do the NAS backup repositories to tape or even object storage repositories to tape. So right there, hit next, boom. This is my full backup right here. Here's my standard media pool. I'm going to run this and then here for my incremental backups to what Marty was asking before, we're going to go ahead, we can define a different media pool with a different tape technology. So um, right there, so we have this, so that's where you go ahead and define what pool you want to use for your fools, for your incrementals. And then last but not least, just a little uh, items here, you know, here is going to be, here's where you can kind of, um, limit your uh, your your drives. You know, let's say you had a massive library with multiple partitions or whatnot, and you only want to use two drives in this scenario um, because it's for a, a, a less mission critical data set. Go ahead and leverage this click right here, and we're only going to use two tape drives. This, oh, this is new actually. Do, 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 I'm not aware of this. Okay, so the, this right here is nice. We can actually use, if you're backing up Windows SMB um, V3 file shares, we can actually use VSS now um, when we're backing up to tape. Now, what does that give you benefit-wise? Um, if you guys are familiar with backing up unstructured data, if a user has a file open, it's considered locked. You can't protect it. If you use VSS, guess what? We're actually going to be backing up off that VSS shadow copy, not the actual file themselves. So now that file isn't considered locked because a user, um, we're not touching the actual file. We're using the VSS snapshot. 
So that's really kind of the ben big benefit that I know is that being able to back up um, locked files. And let's go ahead. Yep. So yeah, so really, once again, the real main difference is on these jobs, items are available. Cancel there, cancel there. Uh, let's take a look at this GFS job real quick. Let's take a look what that looks like. Bam. Once again, there's my backups, right? So you can see for job for uh, tape uh, backup to tape jobs, backup from a job perspective or repository. And guess what? I'm not showing you here, but any any um, any repository supported by Veeam now supported for tape. There's your media pool. So here is your GFS policy, and we can go ahead and show you in this scenario. Right, we're gonna have we're gonna do 14 dailies, four weeklies, 12 monthlies, four quarterlies, and one yearly, and we're gonna go. And so let's be honest. Um, I really don't see people doing dailies anymore on tape. Right, that that was kind of the negative uh, misconception on tape is people hated man uh, managing daily tapes. Um, and so really the way technology has progressed these days, you know, having that really resilient on-prem repository, you know, it is, it is, I don't feel um, it is required to do daily tapes anymore. Um, go ahead and do, you know, maybe your weeklies, your monthlies of tape, because you should have those daily recovery points protected on-prem for that fast recovery option, and then really leveraging the, um, the tape side for that that deeper items, you know, for that immutability target, just for that CY in case that you need to pull something from there. So, um, so once again, right, GFS, I see the daily, but I, I, I'm, I'm seeing the trend that people are not doing dailies to tape anymore, pretty much is sticking to weeklies, monthlies, quarterlies, and yearlies. There's additional options here um, for these GFS policies. We can go ahead and eject the tape amongst completion. And then here is going to be the scheduler of how often we're doing these jobs or how often we're kind of creating that full to trigger it as a weekly, monthly, or quarterly. And in this scenario, we're going to do it um, every day at 12 a.m. But you can go ahead and choose the specific day you want to create a monthly backup and a weekly backup, quarterlies, and yearly. I thought we we're getting rid of quarterlies, but it looks like we're keeping them. All right, got my jobs running there. So let's see, any other questions, guys? Nope. Oh, one more. Sorry, I'm not keeping track of these questions well. Do, 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 see dailies. Yeah, to your point, Marty, yeah, it's it's more of, um, Marty does, like, he does see dailies come, coming back. You know, my, my comment to that is um, yes, as long as you really have another another tier, you know, on disk, you know, we're definitely not reverting back to the days we're running everything to tape, right? We still want to use everything from that disk side of things for that fast recovery options. But to your point, um, Marty, yeah, if they have the these really mission critical apps um, that they need those dailies off the tape, that's more of that's more relevant. But you know, gone are the days of just writing everything um, from a daily perspective um, to tape. All right, guys. Um, let's see. Anything else you guys want to discuss here? You know, this is this is the new V12 lab with the tape side of things. Um, because it kind of just wraps up my side of things from my PowerPoint perspective. You know, so when we get more questions, but you know, I'll kind of keep this uh, the form open now. Feel free to ask anything, guys, and we can go. We can pivot from anything Veeam or stick to tape conversations. You know, um, one thing I didn't talk about was um, tape uh, tenant to tape backups. We were service providers out there. We do provide you the capability to do your tenant backups of tape, um, and they're really not even aware. You know, it's more protection from your side of things and from a cost perspective. You'll be, um, you know, really saving from a cost perspective writing your tenants to tape. Don't be shy, everyone. Ask a question.
we will make we will make this recording uh, available online. So, right. Yeah, I think isn't that branded by you, Marty Taz? <laughs> I didn't want I didn't want to steal it from you. I know you do love your Taz, but yeah, tape as a service I, for service providers. Yeah, I do have a famous slide I use all the time. It's the character Taz. Yep. My tape as a service. Yep, love it. <laughs> Uh, can you please share the PowerPoint recordings with us? Um, yes, we should be able to um, have that released here at the end of the session. Yeah, I'll also be posting them up into the community uh, as well as the video is going to go on the VUG uh, YouTube channel as well for Canada. And then it'll end up on the Veeam YouTube channel as well, typically. Not sure if you want the PowerPoint, if you want to scrub the PowerPoint before we post it at all. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure there's, um, it's, it's clean. Yeah. Well, I guess if there's no more questions, then uh, we can uh, end things early. Um, thank you, Vin for that wonderful presentation. Um, it was very, I found it very informative, the very first part of it. So it's kind of interesting to learn about the tape and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm a bit of a history buff. So yeah, <laughs> that was that was very interesting. And uh, yeah, it's really cool to see all the new features that uh, in version 12. And, yep, uh, uh, yeah. tape is not dead, right? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some great enhancements too. I really like that graphic about uh, the, the evolution of the LTO and, uh, yeah. and the capacity and speed it has now, right? Let's say they missed their mark and they have 300 terabytes of tape. That's still very impressive. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And the beam, co the, the tape copy, also a good feature. I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, but really. Yeah, really I need to really cool. highlight that, highlight that function more. Um, it's it's, cool. it's hard finding yeah. details around it. Because that is a big pain point with a lot of people, right, is the old, the older technologies, right? And if they have the capability with Veeam to, to move that to to newer tapes, then that's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, in the past it was it was kind of tied to the hardware side of things. Where now of us just update the catalog and it's just a read, mm -hmm. you know, read and a write. So it's really changing 20. changing that model. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yes. And the Postgres being free and <laughs> with no limitations. That's that's a group that's a really big feature especially for tape now right with the catalog right yeah yes you know and, and the performance have drastically increased because you know we don't have that limitation from um, the database perspective so it's you know I've, I've been seeing some pretty impressive numbers and these are just through you know a handful of tape drives you know imagine if you were spinning up you know eight nine ten tape drives you can really get this thing thing going you know on a side note you know it's funny while well, i'm working at spectra logic i was one of the people involved with rate random access independent tape so we actually loaded 10 tape drives with uh tapes and wrote them and striped it across kind of for that redundancy it didn't really take off it was for the um super computing facility in illinois but it was interesting developing rate interesting yeah huh. cool Oh, no more questions. Yeah. Looks, oh, like, looks cool. like we're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks like we're good. Okay. Yeah, thanks uh, again. I, I, yeah, thanks everyone for uh, joining us. Um, as we said, we'll make the presentation and the recording available uh, probably within the next few days. Um, I know it takes a little bit of time for them to download and get the links and everything to me. So, but other than that, thank you for attending uh, and hopefully we'll see you at the next one. Yeah, and yeah, post any suggestions you have for for something you'd like to see, and then we'll uh, we'll try to get it to to happen. Yeah, absolutely.